<laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do something kind of fun here, which is we're gonna broadcast a live episode of Redefine with Matthew Jordan Smith, who was having like a crazy busy week and like so graciously said he would join us, which we really appreciate. And to kick this off, we're gonna do two intros. One is gonna be, um, well, this is it. <laughs> the one about welcome you to Creative Live. Um, and then we're gonna do another one where we just welcome you to Redefine because we're gonna take the show, kind of cut it all up, package it, and send it out during Fashion Week next Tuesday. Fantastic, sounds good. Okay, and oh my gosh, your voice is like, you could, do you do voice work? You should do voice work. <laughs> I am available, yeah. IRB. <laughs> Very good. All right, so um, so here's our first one. Thank you, Matthew Jordan Smith, for joining us today on Creative Live. It's a great pleasure being here. I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you for having me on the show. All right, here's our second intro. Thank you so much, Matthew Jordan Smith, for joining us on Redefine. How are you guys doing? It's a pleasure being here. I'm Matthew Jordan Smith here in LA, and I am glad, happy, and elated to be a part of the show. Look at a pro, right? Like a pro, fantastic. Um, I don't know if you know that. I stumbled on <laughs> all that, but. Can you give us a quick overview of your work, your style, your focus, you? Oh, a quick overview. Well, it's 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 evolved over the years. It started off in the beginning of my career, 25 years ago. It started off being strictly just just beauty, and it's still the base of my work. Uh, it was just cosmetic. Um, I was shooting for Pantene, L'Oreal, um, Revlon, hair co companies and, and cosmetic companies. And it evolved into going from that to shooting celebrities for covers of magazines. And basically because of, of my beauty style of work. And that's still basically the big part of my work. It's evolved from, from that into portraits. But the base of my work has always been about capturing the essence of people and making them look beautiful. That's what I've always loved doing. And I still love doing. Making yeah. them feel beautiful first and foremost, and then look beautiful. Yeah, can you give, um, yeah, two things. One, can you put the, go ahead and put the headset on so we can hear you clear. But number two, can you give us um, your website address so we can check out your ridiculously gorgeous work? <laughs> My website is MatthewJordanSmith.com. M-A-T-T-H-E-W-J-O-R-D-A-N-S-M-I-T-H.com. Perfect. And earlier we were talking about how helpful it was to have one consistent name be your website and when you're out there and stuff like that. So wonderful. Um, so what is Fashion Week next week in New York? Yes. What is your most favorite fashion shoot ever? Actually, it's happening wow, now. Wow, that's a hard one. Favorite fashion shoot ever over the last 25 years? Oh, yeah, yeah, just one, you know, right there. <laughs> well, I, I know everything. I think it's probably definitely the, the editorial work. The, um, I did a story with Tyra a couple of years ago uh, where we shot in this old, uh, the old Woolworth mansion. Uh, it's for Canadian magazine. There's a whole beautiful fashion spread, and that was a lot of fun. Um, but then there's also the times working on, on Tyra's uh, top model show. Uh, I shot four times for the show, and those are always over the top, a lot of fun, craziness, uh, way more than you see on TV. Really? Those are always fun. Because you know it's it's beyond just doing that commission job. It's it's a uh, it's reality TV. So those those are always fun as well. <laughs> Very cool. The um, and I'm seeing you this way, by the way. So if you could look into the screen, yeah, there you are. Then I see okay. you better. I see your sparkly eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the um, we were talking earlier, and one of the biggest reasons I wanted to reach out to you is um, we were talking earlier about the idea of not just waiting for business. But yeah. going out and making business, and you Absolutely. have done that very well. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your mentality behind that and, and what you've done, an example of a way that you've said, you know what, I'm going to go out and make something happen? You know, you, it's funny because I had a, a meeting today with my agent, and it's, you're always making work happen. It's not about sitting back and waiting for the phone to ring. If you do that, you're going to starve. You have to go out there and be aggressive and, and make work happen. And how you do that is you, you shoot what you love. First and foremost, shoot what you love. And then shoot what you want. From that. So if somebody's not hiring you to shoot, it doesn't mean that you can't get work. You'll shoot work that you love doing. And then use that as a promotional piece. You use it to have a gallery show. You submit the work to different magazines. And not just in the States, but anywhere around the world. 
And even today, my, my agent and I talk about doing that, shooting a story and sending it to a specific magazine, and then using that as, as a press material to send out and get more work. That's how it works. You can't sit back and for the phone to ring. You have to always show your best work and put right. it out there. And I love doing that, because then you're showing, you're shooting what you love. There's not an art director out there telling you what to do. You're doing what you love, mm -hmm. and it, it turns into work. And you get work doing what you love doing. It's yeah. the best of worlds. So you will say, you know what, I don't have a client paying me right now for this, but this is what I, I want to do. I envision it this way. I'm going to go ahead and pull it all together, including like hiring models. Absolutely. And, and getting everything together and, and shooting in a gorgeous location and say from, from start to finish, I have no guarantees here. There's no guarantees, period, in life. You know, you, you make things happen. Yeah. You have to first believe fully in your work, in your, in your art, um, and I do. I know if I do the work that I love, I get the, the best models I can find, the best hair and makeup, and we get together and we have fun, we're gonna make great images. And then from there, people are gonna love it. And that's what happens. As, as a matter of fact, I have more fun doing that type of work than the commission work that I get. Um, every time I do something for myself, that's my vision, it always leads to something amazing. Always. Oh, I love that. I love how you speak of it too, with such conviction and obvious, like, obvious joy. I love it. I love yeah. photography. Like nothing else, I love photography. If you, um, so take for example one of those experiences. What would be an example of something that came out of doing that? Like I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna put it together, um, I'm gonna submit it to magazines. What happens next? Oh. Does it get picked up? Do you get, do, do you finally? Well, I, I, have, I have quite a few stories like that, but I'll give you one just off the top of my head. Um, I, I went to an exhibit and it's an exhibit that I didn't wanna go to. I went to see this, this, this bug fair and I'm there, I'm trying to figure out when I can leave but then I walked to this one room and it was filled with these beautiful butterflies everywhere. And then like that, I had this inspiration to shoot a beauty story based on butterflies. So my head's now going, I have all these ideas popping through my brain about what to do with these, these beautiful colors of the butterflies. And I, I get back and I, I call my team, I call my hair and makeup person and I tell them my idea, but they didn't experience the show. They just hear me talking about it. So I went online and I, I downloaded visuals of butterflies to show them the beauty and color of butterflies that you find in nature. Mm -hmm. And then I sketched out my idea so you can see what's in my head. And we got together and brainstormed and put together these great images based on butterflies. And I called the story Madam Butterfly. So then I entered these pictures after we shot this great story. Uh, of turning a model into a butterfly. I took the images and submitted to a magazine. The magazine ran the story. Um, and then they called me also, as, as the images, they called me and said, we want to use this for the cover of the magazine. They ran it as a cover of a magazine. It was a magazine in Italy. It ran as the cover. And then I had it, the same image, actually a different image from the same shoot in a show in New York. Um, I didn't know where it would be in the show, but I came to New York for the show. And there's this gigantic poster outside the exhibit in the gallery, and it was my image. Out of all the sh images in the show, they chose that image to be the poster uh, walking into the show. So it goes on more than that. So this magazine in Europe that ran the article, uh, I got a call from a gallery in Italy saying, we saw this article, we, we saw your work, we'd like to have you have an exhibit in Italy. So my, my first exhibit ever in Italy was based off of that. Um, then a year later, another gallery saw that show and they called, so I had another show in Verona. So I had two shows, um, uh, a gallery exhibit, a magazine article, all from doing the work that I love. And remember, I didn't want to go to the gallery in the first place. I was <laughs> compelled to go. And then when I, once I got there, I found this inspiration that led to everything. And that's how life works. That's how photography works. You find your inspiration. You've got to get out there and get out and experience life and find your inspiration. And when you, when you get that moment, that brief second, you go out and you put what inspires you into your work. That's why I can really copy your style because your style comes from your heart and what inspires you. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, 
you're good to go. Mm. I love that. Do you love that? Was that was a long story, but I was trying to make it shorter and no, I have tons of those stories like that. That's, that's brilliant because that, that's exactly it. You started from here, like purity, inspiration, vision, excitement, just what you saw. And you talked about how you got to get it down because that's it's really it. hard to explain your vision to other people if they don't see it because it's really clear in here. They can hear, but they can hear it, see it, and touch it by having the sketches. I can, I can tell them my idea, then I can show them my idea, and they can give them the, the tangible sketch to hold, and then it becomes theirs. And the team brings the image to life. The team stands for together each achieves more. And my team, bring my, they bring my images to life. Yeah, yeah, oh, wonderful. Let me ask you with that, because that's, um, that's truly inspiring, and, and it's, it really is keeping with the message of what we're talking about here today is do the work, go for it, come from this place, recognize there can be a lot of barriers in the way, but how do you overcome them all? Um, in your experience, have you ever um, faced fear about things that you wanted to try or do, and, and what do you do with that? I, I love that question. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you, you're supposed to. Your, your knees to be shaking with every project you do. Uh, it's the only way you grow, by, is by going out on a limb to get the fruit. Uh, it's, it's funny because I have always had these, these, these periods in my life when I was maybe a little fearful about doing something. But you tackle it anyway, and you, you make it happen. Uh, beginning of my career, I, was, I, was, I wasn't really sure if I should take the trip to New York and start my career in New York because everybody was saying, oh, it's very hard to start your career in New York. But I did it anyway. And then everything I've, I've done in my career, I was maybe a little fearful in the beginning. I'm working on a project now, it's probably the biggest project, hands down, of my career. And I'm definitely very fearful about it, but I love that process also. If you're an athlete, athlete at that point, as uh, butterflies and stuff before going out for a big game, once you're in the game, it goes away. Mm -hmm. Same photography. Once you're in the mode of doing what you're fearful of doing, that fear goes away. And it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. You're supposed to be scared. I love it. I like because the way you're talking about your knee shaking and that's supposed to happen and, and the butterflies in your stomach, which is ironic because you were just talking about butterflies. <laughs> the the <laughs> <That's> butterflies <right. laughs> in your stomach and you're saying that not only <laughs> not only are you afraid, but you have also had enough experience to recognize that that is part of it. And you it get to look forward name. now to being in the game, in the shoot, watching those fears melt away and just being in it and the sensation of that experience, which is like a sort of joy where the fear ebbs and you are in something, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's part of the process. You know, my, my first book, um, I had never done a book before. It was a, a mix of, you know, images and also interviews. Uh, so it wasn't really a photo book. and. People were saying it would be hard to do. It would take me three, four years to get a deal and to get it out there. But I did the book. I got a deal in three days. Um, I found an agent right away. I had a, six different uh, publishers fighting for the book. Um, it was a six-figure advance, and I was scared to do it. That's yeah. how it happens. Yeah. And, then, and, and do you find sometimes that um, if you just go off what everybody else tells you is too hard to do, that, that like, where do you get to? You can't, you can't listen to those other voices. Right. Um, people are putting their fears on you. You must trust in your work and your vision and leave everything out yeah. and go for it. Ah, wonderful. Mm. Okay, so um, what, given that you love photography, you're so excited <laughs> about it, you're still so passionate about it, um, just for fun, what is one of your favorite toys that you're, I mean, because we've been talking so much oh, about business man, and vision. Favorite toys. Tell you us know, about a it, favorite toy. Just <laughs> give us a nice little shallow break from all this depth that is exhausting us. What's one of your favorite toys to my play with? My favorite toys, oh my God. I, just one, I, just one. You know, okay, three. I think a photographer is like a gadget person. We love, we love stuff and, you know, I definitely have my favorites. Uh, uh, one is, uh, I'm not sure if you can even see it back there, is a, a beauty dish. Beauty dish, I have. yeah. Um, my, my profile of beauty dishes is, is probably one of my favorite lighting tools that I use a lot. Um, 
I used to just shoot beginning of this week. Was the beginning of this week? I forget. It's all running together now. <laughs> where I uh, shot the, um, a guy, and I had a limited amount of time to shoot him. And I was trying to get a lot out of the shot, out of the shoot. So I used just a beauty dish. And I even talked about my blog. I talked about how I used this one beauty dish and changed it to make five different looks on the spot. And it was very fun to do. And, um, I love doing that kind of thing when you can just have control and play with light. And once you master light and know how to, how to make it give you these small nuances, you can do anything you want. And that tool is one of my favorites. Another tool that I like a lot is uh, my color checker, Passport. I use that a lot in every, every shoot. Uh, um, my magnum reflector, my, my, my uh, my cameras, I guess, is one of my favorite tools right now. Uh, <laughs> right now is uh, my Sony A900. I, I love that camera. And, and my favorite, one of my favorite lenses is, is the 85, which I think I have my a body over here, yeah. You, so, so wait, you literally <laughs> surround yourself with the things you love. You're like, it's oh, it's all, all time, right you know? here. I, I'm, I'm a photographer. I love shooting. I know. I have tools around me all the time. Hilarious. Um, I love it. You're like, <laughs> even, even other tools. Uh, You've got to feed your soul with, with great information and, and uh, having great books around is, is essential. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reading all the time. And, and they're usually not photography books. I give my interns specific books each time. I have different interns come in from a, um, every semester and I give them specific things to read all the time. And they're not photography books, but it helps them become better photographers. What's one, and one what's of my one book? favorite yeah. books. Yeah. One of my favorite books, um, which I should have it's around here. It's also surrounded. Oh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> One of my favorite books, How to Win Friends mm, Dale and Influence Carnegie. People mm -hmm. by Dale Carnegie. Mm -hmm. uh, this book has helped me immensely as a photographer, as a business person, as an artist, um, because you're, you're working with people. And it's about that relationship. This book has been a big part for me. Um, another book that's majorly beneficial for me. Um, it's probably about being scared. Oh, I love this. We read yeah, the same books. I love this. My favorite mm -hmm. books because, you know, we have this plan for our life and what we, what we think it will be, but life takes over and changes everything. And this book is about the journey. And as a photographer, as an artist, we are all on this journey. And it is, it's part of the journey not to know what's going to happen. And, and to be fearful, but to believe in your work and put it out there. Mm -hmm. I, and I, by the way, I just, I love that you just <laughs> like this, this, the great book choices. I've got my toys around me, so you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, and, and you are, um, in all my interactions with you, you are a very friendly person. Obviously, a, part of that is just you, but you can see how that um, interacting in a way, no matter, I mean, because you've achieved a lot of success and top of the game stuff. Um, but you still are like just nice and friendly and great to interact with. And, and that's, I mean, part of the whole premise of, uh, you know, Dale Carnegie's work was, you know, people want to be with people they like. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, I feel like I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm blessed in my career. Um, I'm doing what I love for, for a living. And it's, it's not everybody who has that opportunity to have that, to have that, that passion, mm -hmm. that, that uh, you know, that way of making a living do what you love, there's nothing yeah. better than that. Agreed. And I can do that. Yeah. All right. So talking to people who are doing work they love, so people who love their work and are also running a business so that they can continue to do, work the love, do the work they love, what yes. are three piece of, pieces of advice that you would offer anybody who is running a business, growing a business, managing a business, what just rapid fire from your experience, three things. Uh, three things really fast. First and foremost, make sure you're, you're doing what you love doing. Make sure you're, you're, you're loving it, because if you, if you don't, you won't stick with it. Um, Business-wise, make sure you, you are on top of, of, your, of your numbers every month. Mm -hmm. um, I, I read a lot of books. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big, anybody who knows me knows I'm a, I'm a big uh, advocate of Warren Buffett. I've read everything about him over the last 10 years. Wait, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear that. You're a big advocate for what? For Warren Buffett. Warren I, I Buffett. I love reading about Warren Buffett mm -hmm. uh, and business and the way he conducts business. 
Um, he's, if you don't know who Warren Buffett is, he's the only man in the world who's made his billions, B, billions, strictly off the stock market. Um, and he, he doesn't live in, in New York or LA or Chicago. He lives in, you know, Omaha, Nebraska, and he does business as, as a businessman. And I've learned a lot by reading, even photography, I've learned a lot by reading about him. Uh, and you must be on top of business, period. Um, number two, I'm gonna go back to, for business again, is how do friends influence people? This is a business of dealing with people. So you've gotta make sure you are in contact with people face-to-face, -face, on the phone, not just through social media and email. You have to have that connection. And a lot of people are forgetting about that, but it's very important. Uh, and always market and promote. Even when there's a, a down economy or a good economy, you're always promoting and getting your work out there. That means doing things that are the, the obvious things, like sending out a mailer or whatever, and also doing things that are subliminal, like having a show. Um, it's one of the best ways you can to get work is to have a show, have an exhibit. It can be at your local Starbucks or coffee house or gallery, but have a show, have an exhibit showing your best work. Mm -hmm. And then invite all your clients and maybe you want to be clients. Yeah. Give them a reason to get dressed up, get out and see great work. Mm -hmm. It's the best thing you can do. Mm. And, 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 and as you said, and everything else you gave as an example, you don't have to be wait, you don't have to wait to be invited <laughs> to give no, an exhibit. You don't, you don't wait. You, cr you sit down Everybody and say, I'm throwing it's an exhibit. It's happened. I'm doing a show. And then you go out and you do everything you need to do to produce a show. And Absolutely. you get people buzzed and talking and excited. And, and have you felt that by doing that, you're able to get bursts of feedback? Absolutely, absolutely. Every time I do, something great happens. As a matter of fact, when you work on something, you put it out there, you get back way more than you ever dream will come. Your job is to put the work out there and not worry about everything else. The universe yes. will conspire to help you. Yes. To put the work out there. I truly believe in that. Yeah, I do too. The universe will conspire to help you if you put the work out there. I, big believer. Um, well, um, I, we were all talking how much we think you're awesome and your work's great. And um, we at Creative Live would love to invite you to come here and present and be an instructor in the future. Would, would you be? I would love that. I would ding, 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 ding. Good. I, I told Craig, I'm like, let me do the proposal. I want to do it. <laughs> Will you please? No. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. You guys are going to make that happen, right? We, I, would, I would love it. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Make that happen. We're going to make it happen. Excellent. Well, good. Okay, we're going to, um, again, I know you are slammed and you have a ton going on. So I really appreciate you jumping in and talking to us. I'm going to do two closeouts. <laughs> the first will be for Redefine. So to close it out. So thank you so much for joining us today on Redefine. And I'm excited to see more of your work. Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure being here, being a part of this. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Okay, that was our first close. <laughs> our second close. We love you. Thanks for joining us in Creative Live. <laughs> I'm excited to watch you, you. I'm excited to sit down and watch your class. Coming up soon. I'm looking forward to it. I'm nervous. I'm scared. I know. I know. You're supposed to be. And that feels good. Exactly. Anybody else want to say anything else other than thank you? Thank you. Can you if you can hear them, they're all saying thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me on the show. It's been a real, real pleasure. I wish you guys all the best. Shoot what you love. Absolutely. Thank you, Matthew. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Woo! How much do you love that he just said all the things that I just, but like <laughs> real world, awesome guy. Wow. Yay. Two shows. Nailed them. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Woo! But I love that, like he's, he's, like he's very true to it. I mean, 25 years, a, a career spanning 25 years, lots of success. Fashion, you're shooting fashion and you're shooting on America's Top Model, that's pretty good, yeah. right? Um, and if you get a chance to go to his portfolio, check it out, there's some gorgeous work up there. Um, and Oprah. He's, say again? Oprah. Oprah, yes, exactly. Also, a, I think people have heard of her. O P R A H. <laughs> Oprah. No, you're going to crush your site. Yeah. <laughs> we can't handle the traffic. Um, I need Oprah's hosting. <laughs> My site crashed. Um, and then, um, 
on top of all that, the fact that even at the top of his game and doing so well and everything he's got going on, he's constantly making new things happen. He's putting on an exhibit. He's going out and you know, all the things he said. Um, I love that because all these obstacles we're talking about, he's like, yep, feel that, feel that, get that, move through.